Hey there guys, um, just getting back home to the Casa, uh, just wanted to touch base, uh, kind of relay what's, uh, what, what, you know, what's going on with me and what have you. Um, so, went out today, I, I got myself Rita's as a reward, um, first Rita's of the, of the season for me, black, um, black cherry, large black cherry with a straw, um. So anyway, uh, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, one of the things that I kind of tell people a, a, a fair bit and uh, what have you is, uh, you know, own your shit, uh, to, to put it in the simplest terms. Um, you know, own your shit. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, um, walk your walk. Uh, talk your talk, but walk it, you know, take responsibility for, for what you say, what you do. Um, if you fuck up, own up, you know, uh, to what you, what you did, take responsibility for it, fix it. Um, you know, if, if you, um, if you didn't fuck up, you know, be honest about it and, you know, defend your position, you know, um, but basically bottom line, you know, own your shit. Um, so, uh, in that vein, um, you know, I've been, I've been saying, Hey, you know, telling people you know, wear your mask, get your COVID shots, stay away from people, all the, all the, the things you're supposed to be doing. Um, and, uh, so on the 30th of March, uh, Maryland finally opened up, uh, to pretty much the general public. We finally to that level of, of uh, or that phase or whatever they want to call it. Um, I think it's 16 and older. Um, if you have, uh, you know, an underlying medical, um, and if not, you can kind of make an excuse, to, to, you know, and, and get in. Um, I don't think they're being too strict about that. Um, so, um, but anyway, that being the case, um, I, uh, I went today. This was the first appointment available for me. Um, is, is, uh, they opened it up. I got the notice yesterday that, uh, they were opening up appointments. Um, so made an appointment last night, went up this morning. I got my comeback later card. Uh, you know, I got my little sticker. Uh, I didn't get a Band-Aid because... I, you know, she said I didn't need a Band-Aid. I, I wanted a Band-Aid and a lollipop, but I didn't get those. But I got my first shot. Now, um, right here in Cecil County, they're, uh, they're offering two different shots depending on who you go to. The, 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 um, the hospital uh, group is offering uh, the Johnson shot and... Um, the health department is offering the Moderna shot. So, um, I kind of looked up both and kind of weighed my options, uh, on, on which one of those I was going to get. Um, because, you know, I could, and I ended up, uh, going with the Moderna shot. Um, you know, they're both effective shots. They both say that, uh, you know, prevent, uh, uh, any of the any of the bad problems, uh, you know, um, the severe effects of COVID, what have you, keep you out of the hospital, uh, you know, for the most part. Um, so, so, you know, so they're both good in that regard. So either one, get one. Um, you know, you dig a little deeper. Uh, the Moderna shot um, has a slightly higher efficacy percentage. Um, then the Johnson shot, uh, the difference is the Johnson shot is a single shot. Boom. Once you're done, um, the Moderna shot, you got to come back in a couple of weeks. You know, it's an inconvenience. Um, there's folks that say that the, uh, uh, the second Moderna shot, you know, um, was a little more painful or, or, or what have you. Um, you know, uh, it's just an inconvenience. I, you know, I've, I've dealt with inconvenience my whole life. Um, you know, the, 
the anthrax vaccines in the army. I got four of them. They didn't kill me. Um, you know, um, did I like it? No. Was I happy about it? No. Did I do it? Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you do what you got to do. So, you know, I couldn't exactly not go at the first opportunity. I mean, I wanted to anyway, but I couldn't exactly not go at the first opportunity and, and continue to say, Hey, you know, you guys got to get yours. No, like I say, you, you walk your walk and you talk your talk and you own your shit. Um, you know, and, uh. It's something that we need to do. It's something that needed to be done. Um, so I went and I did it. I didn't fuck around. I didn't, you know, find an excuse or any goddamn thing else. My freedoms. You know, um, that sort of thing. Hey, look. I, I talk about my grandfather. Excuse me. Now and again on these things. And, um, you know, I talk about, you know, he lived through the depression and stuff. He, he lived through that. He lived through... Uh, World War II. In fact, he, he joined up, you know, right at the beginning of World War II and served his time. Um, but he also lived through uh, the Spanish flu. So I'm not unfamiliar with how bad that was. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, I heard the stories. I mean, you know, he, he, my grandfather didn't talk a lot, but he talked some. Um, so, you know, other than what you hear in the history books or, or what have you, you're, you're taught in school and you're really not taught much. I heard it firsthand. I heard it from him. So I know what can be, what was, what have you. Um, I know how bad this could have and may still get. I mean, um, the Spanish flu... You know, there was the first wave, and then it went away, and that second wave is, is what really kind of devastated people and, and killed a lot of people. And now they're talking, you know, um, they're looking at a, the, a fourth peak with, with uh, COVID, and they're looking at the variations. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, reinfections of, of or, or, you know, or not reinfections, but mutations because so many people got it because people are fucking stupid um, and don't do what they're supposed to do. And my, my freedom trumps everything. Well, you know, let's, let's, let's talk about that. Um, absolutely freedom. I mean, I, you know, I 22 years in the Army. That's, you know, I support it. Um, I believe in the Constitution. I believe in, in, in the rights in the Constitution. I believe in the freedoms we have in this country. Um, but there is a difference between freedom and being a self-centered, self-righteous, me-only, egotistical bastard. Um, sometimes it's a fine line. Um, the fact of the matter is, yes, freedom... But freedom's spouse is responsibility. Um, without the responsibilities that come, that are implied with, and and and, and come come implied with with freedom, you don't deserve the freedom. You know, you 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 earn that freedom, and part of that is the responsibilities that go along with it. Um. We live in a society. We don't live as individuals. We don't live isolated. I don't care how much you think, oh, I'm going to be the one that's going to do everything by myself on my own when the world, when the shit hits it. Bullshit. Bullshit. You live in a society. You have responsibilities to that society. Whether you like it or not, you reap the benefits of that society right now. You may think, oh, I, I do everything for myself. You didn't build all the roads. You didn't build all the factories. You didn't build all the whatever. The the phone company, you know, the the, the those those socialist snow plows that plow the driveway or plow the roads. Uh, the socialist fire trucks that come and put the fire out fire at your house out. Um, none of that. You know, you don't live in a boy in a bubble world. You are part of society and being part of society means that you 
take responsibility. You, you meet your responsibilities to society. You don't just take. Um, and right now that responsibility is, is looking out for other people. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in some ways thankful, um, that my mom passed a while back because, uh, with cancer and stuff, my mom was immunocompromised. Um, it would have been a huge risk for her living right now. Um, there are a lot of people that way. And we, as a society, owe it to those people who are in the situation that they are immunocompromised to look out for them. That's what you do in a society. You look out for one another. You're not some ignorant, selfish, self-important bastard. Um, there's a theory. It's, it's, it's called the shopping cart theory. And uh, it really kind of illustrates it perfectly. Um, if you think about it, there is no law that says that you have to put your shopping cart in the little return thing. There's nobody standing there with a gun that's going to shoot you if you don't put your shopping cart away. There's no, they're not going to cart you off to jail. But at the same time, deep down, we all know the right thing to do, just because it is the right thing to do, is put your fucking shopping cart away. So shopping cart theory says that you can judge the morality of a person and the character of a person by whether or not they put their shopping cart away. Because there's nothing making you do it. There's nothing hanging over your head to, to do it or to not do it. But we know it's the right thing to do. So when you're in that situation where, where, where there are no consequences, there are no, and there's the right thing, whether you do that right thing or you don't do that right thing says a lot about who and what you are. No, I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect. God knows that nobody thinks I'm perfect. Um, I can tell you that there's a whole lot of people who could, who could have and do um, debate just how imperfect I am. And uh, I'll be the first to tell you I'm not. I don't claim to be. Um, but as much as I can, I try to do the right thing. Now, I, I don't do it all the time. There's, I'm not, you know, like I say, I'm not perfect. I don't recycle every single piece of plastic that, you know, or, or whatever. Or I don't, you know. But I make the effort to at least do the right thing as much as I can, as, as much as possible. And that's, that's all, you know, that's all it comes down to is you, you, you got to make the effort. You got to try, um, rather than everything is, is, is your freedom and your right and your personal right. And everybody's interfering. You don't want to kiss my ass because you live in a society. You have responsibilities to that society that comes along with the freedoms and the rights of that of, of of being in that society. Like I say, responsibility is the spouse of freedom. It is the spouse of rights. Um, and if you can't uphold one, you don't deserve the other. That's, that's my opinion. Um, take it or leave it. That's where I stand. So go get your fucking vaccines. Wear your fucking masks. Wash your fucking hands. You know, um, that's my opinion on it. I have my opinion of people who um, are, are, are against all of that. Um, this is not a political issue. It's not about politics. It's about doing the right thing as a society. Um, I could say a lot more on that. Um, in a lot less nice terms, but um, I think you get my point, and uh, that's how I feel about it, you know, take it or leave it, so like I say, uh, walk your walk, talk your talk, own your shit, and in that regard, I went up today, I got my vaccine, I've got my next appointment, um, and I will be there and, and 
be taking that one too. You know, it's it's not that hard to wear a fucking mask. Oh my God, it's 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 infringing. It's a it's a slave collar. That, you people today don't know what hardship is. You don't know what oppression is. Most of you, oppression is you can't get your goddamn latte in the morning in the first two minutes that you get in the fucking store. Anyway, that's that's my opinions. Um, I just wanted to kind of, uh, you know, I get it off my chest and uh, get it out there. All right. So uh, you guys take care. You know, stay loco. Um, stay stay safe. Stay stay healthy. All right. Bye.